Hi, good evening everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our annual town hall meeting for December 5th, 2022 at 6 p.m. Good evening council, audience members, and our few administrators are here. <laughs> Mr. Bridge won't be here this evening. He is not feeling well. So, uh, and Mr. Uh, Kitko will be filling in as the assistant city manager and our clerk for a few moments till Ms. Burner arrives. So, if you would follow up. Yep, and the fire chief should be back. back. He's on a gas leak possible. So, okay. um, Mayor Lowry. Here. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. And Councilman Roadwald. Here. All present. All right. Um, before we get into department uh, reports, uh, just this is our our, um, you know, our town hall. So when we get to comments from the members, when we get to comments from members of the public, you know, really anything you guys have on your mind, questions, comments for anything related to the city of Newport Isle or just how the year has gone, any feedback that you guys want to give us or, or ask, it's, I mean, this would be your time. So I wish there was more people here, but I'm glad that those of you who are here, thank you for coming. So with that being said, I'll hand it over to um, oh, the, the department reports. Um, I was thinking it would be a, uh, be a prayer in here, so, but it's not, so we will. Yeah, let's do it anyway. Mr. Lindsay, we'll do the no, no pledge or anything in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was giving a little bit of slack, guys, in our way. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us this evening as we conduct the city of this uh, correction, the uh, city business in this town hall this evening, Father. Let the residents have some good ideas. Let council be receptive. Father, we ask you to protect our firefighters, our police department, our military all around the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> the pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> All right, so moving on, uh, Mr. Kitko, will you be doing, no, you won't be doing Mr. Bridges, so we'll just start off with your uh, uh, your uh, report for service director. Yep, thank you, Mayor, <coughs> members of the council, <coughs> members of the public. Uh, for 2022, um, I, we had completed uh, the two additional speakers that went along with the other ones we have downtown um, that plays uh, you know music for various times of the season. Uh, we've applied for two community development block grants. Those are CDBG funds, which are federal uh, for Fenwick Phase Two from Scott Street to uh, uh, Brookfield or Kennison to Brookfield. We did get awarded for that, and that will be a 2023 project completion. Uh, applied for a, and awarded a ODNR Department of Natural Resources Nature Works grant for a three additional gazebos at the New Carlisle Pool in 2023 as well. That project uh, should be completed. And we completed an installation of the secondary clarifier for 165,000 down at the wastewater treatment facility. And we have used in road de-icing salt last year about the same, uh, about 100 tons for the year. We normally did about 300 tons and currently our barn is full from last year. Last year's uh, fill, the price did go up as you guys had seen in the uh, previous ordinance, about 10 bucks per ton. So hopefully it's uh, another mild winter and we do get some savings there. For 2023, we'll be performing some roadway resurfacing. Uh, there'll be a few streets uh, in consideration of Falcon, Henry, Villa, Bell Oak, Fourth, and uh, with those come along some ADA, ADA ramp replacements uh, where they're required or do not meet current standards. And currently out for bid as we speak is the, pri uh, the last primary and secondary clarifier for the wastewater treatment plant. Those will be coming in next winter sometime just due to late lead time of being built uh, the part of that uh, project is opwc funds and again we'll be continuing ways that we can still invest in our current infrastructure uh, to save costs in the long run so we've been doing a lot of uh, in-house maintenance on things that we've had to try and keep those going longer uh, get our useful life if it's something like a 10-year or 15-year useful life on a pump we're trying to get it 2025 which is very you know easy to do uh, you just got to keep things oil changed, things like that um, and again we'll apply and utilize grant funds where applicable we've been pretty fortunate with some opwc i believe it's not in uh, written in stone yet but to upgrade all the 
uh, decorative street lights downtown to get those all to LED. Those will be done. And then, uh, you know, increasing our efforts to improve the appearance of the city, i.e. tree trimming, um, uh, curbs, things that are coming up this next year. And a couple big public service announcements. Uh, stop flushing what you see on packaging that says flushable wipes down the toilet. Uh, they are not flushable, even though, and you can ask on any plumber, uh, they cannot stand them. So please throw those away and not down into the toilet. And then place any cooking oils or greases, i.e. cooking bacon or anything where you get that kind of material and put them in proper containers or like we do, um, I put them in a container for cooking other items. Um, and put those in the uh, trash instead of down the trash disposal. Um, and that is all I have for my report. Uh, 2023 will definitely be a busier year than what 22 was for us, it, as far as my department. Awesome, thank you. Ms. Gibson, there's uh, refreshments up here if you'd like some coffee or water. Yep. Any questions for Mr. Kitko, Council? Any report? Mr. Roblaw. Howie, do we know when the, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Kitko, do we know when the uh, resurfacing of Main Street is supposed to start? It will be probably late spring, okay. um, early summer. And the model start? Yeah. Oh, resurface. I think it's got to be done by the end of July. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Nope, that is it. Um, Mr. Kiko, I mean, uh, did he already start the, I think he did, the, uh, contracting out for the company that's taking care of like the trees and stuff on there? It's all completed actually already, yeah. Okay. They've already started and completed them. So I, one of the questions I was going to have was, is like, I know there's a couple of trees that have got a nice bend into them. Is it something that they'll start, they'll work on like next season, like put the, where they put tension on it the opposite direction? Or? We have one that we don't think we're going to, we were trying to give it some time. We had pushed the one back at CVS. Uh, but it kind of keeps leaning that way, so we'll probably just have to replant it. Okay. Yeah, but we have that on our radar. That will probably be them, so we'll probably uh, hydro back it and put a new one in. Okay. And then on the uh, flushable wipes and the grease and oils that get put down the sinks and toilets, just out of curiosity, I don't know if you can give me an answer on this. I mean, what kind of expense is that put on the city? Uh, it used to be a heavy expense because our pumps, uh, maintenance, uh, we had a tons of breakdown. I hate to say it, we, we catch it all with our brand new, with our new bar, I wouldn't say brand new, it's a couple years old now, bar screen, it catches all those, but now it's in our bar screen, goes into a compactor and into the trash, into the dumpster. So we have big, this big logs of all these wipes that go to a fill. But we still, we still have to take care of them. Yeah. What about the cooking oils? How much of an issue is that? Um, the guys and gals are constantly out jetting lines. Uh, we have a we had a big grease build up behind Jeff's automotive in that little line, and it took us probably a couple of days of going through because we have some low lying laterals that you can get um, sanitary coming up into the cleanouts. So to take it easy, but we have tons of cooking grease, and we try to stay on top of in the health department on grease traps like at Studebaker's and Lee's famous restaurant. They're the bigger contributors of the grease issue, really? mainly. I mean, the grease issues are more on the Main Street area of town than residential, but residential, you know, you're not putting as much. I mean, when you're cooking greasy chicken, and it can uh, it can really fill up the mains. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Kitko? All right, thank you very much, sir. And we'll be heading down to Ms. Colleen Harris for the finance. All right, thank you. So my um, finance report for this town hall meeting is only through November. We still have another month to get into our fiscal year. We do January through December. So the revenue that I'm reporting right now is through the end of November, and we've brought in eight million six hundred eighteen thousand nine hundred and seven dollars and seventy cents. When we estimate our budget, we estimate, uh, we usually work on them about a year and a half in advance, and we estimated to bring in $6,766,293. So we're well over the um, estimated revenue with what we've actually received. Going down to the expenditures, the same with our approved budget for 2022, we were approved at $8,241,976, and as of November, we've only spent $6,970,426.64. Now, we will have a few debt payments that are usually at the last of the month that we'll have in December. So when I do my reports in January, they will be calendar year in total, and we'll have ending balances to report. 
Over on uh, some other highlights, though, for the finance department are uh, capital improvements that we have uh, purchased in 2022 are for the general fund. We have spent $63,191. That did purchase the service director new truck. It, um, and these are just highlights. There's a lot of smaller items. We also bought downtown speakers and wiring, and we replaced some of the city signs. In the street department, they purchased a new paint machine. For the ambulance, they purchased new sirens and lights that came to $16,071. In the fire department, they received some new boots and new sets of gear that came to $38,250. Police levy got, um, they spent about $11,180 and they got equipment for their, one of the police cruisers. Water department, um, we've got $82,905 spent and they purchased a chlorine analyzer, a receiver, hydrants, transmitters, and some miscellaneous. Uh, sewer department spent $172,933 for a secondary clarifier and for the Honey Creek lift station engine and controller. There's a lot more breakdown um, in the detail. Those were the highlights for some capital purchases. Uh, that the city was able to do this year. Under our debt payments, we spent a total of $576,900 in debt. And I'll go over them real briefly. The general fund has a general bond, and we do have one that was completed and paid off this year. Uh, Twin Creek has, uh, is the other remaining debt for the general fund. The water plant, has um, a remaining debt till 2026. YMCA extensions will be paid off in 2025. And the new meter program that we did uh, years ago will be paid off in 2035. And the water treatment plant has uh, some debt that will be paid off in 2043. <coughs> and we have another debt that will be paid off next year for the clarifier and the sewer plant. So we do have a lot of debt coming off for next year, so that will be helpful. And the big one is the water treatment plant in a couple more years. Other than that, our department is doing well, and we've been working on customer service and working on some details for the utility department with our new utility clerk, Colleen Ray, that joined us last year. And this year, we'll, 2023, we'll have some software which will help ease some of our um, billing and um, department time that it takes on our old system. And that's my in review. Great, thank you. Council, any questions or comments? No clears. Mr. Rubel. I just want to point out, uh, you didn't cover this, but the, uh, the general fund, any balance from 2015 to now, and how, how uh, much effort you guys have put in to, to get that to where it is. I mean, you know, we're sitting at close to two million dollars after last year where guess what six years prior it was just just a shade of 170 thousand i mean that's that's huge uh, for a city like ours that needs to go after grants and other funding that has and requires matching funds um before before we really took a look at this or they took a look at this well before my time um the city was falling apart because we didn't have the money to get the grants now now we do it's important that we don't go backwards, we go forwards. We keep building on that, there's other ways to improve. Um, that's when you'll start to see the main work get done in the city. You'll start to see more roads, um, more infrastructure, uh, things of that nature. So I just want to applaud you guys for all the hard work you've put in over the last seven, eight years of getting the city back on the right track. Thank you, and that's council support. Oh my. Actually, I was going to kind of ask you, I mean, you just kind of touched on it, but I just, you know, just to have you say it, your own personal feelings. I mean, you know, you've been here for what total? I mean, I know you took a little break, but. Probably 10, at least 10 years. So, I mean, just kind of give us your opinion on Boston from the time you started to where we are, now, if you don't mind. So, no. And this is just a per, just your personal thoughts, nothing, you know. So, um, when I first started um, as the assistant finance director, the city was not a really bad financial um, and a lot of it was uh, 
You had a lot of turnkey people, management, and, and I don't think they really had a good grasp on the finances. But as we worked through it and started saving um, through the years, the police levy was huge with the turnaround for the general fund. So the general fund is the one main fund that we get our income tax from and property taxes, and it supports a lot of things. So when it starts being used in a lot of expenditures, it gets really weak. And when it gets low, and we were down to um, under 50,000 in 2014. So coming back from that, almost going into a fiscal watch, the citizens gave us that police levy, and that was <coughs> at that point the general fund started building again. So we are we are proud of it getting up to the point where now we are able to get the, the needs of the, of the city. Yeah, I would agree. Um, and then what will be nice is, is once, I mean, obviously if you had no, if we had no debt at all, but I mean that, like you said, that new, the new water plant, once that's paid off, that'll, that'll be a huge relief <laughs> yeah. for, for you especially, I'm sure, but yeah, so. Well, thank you very much, Ms. Harris, appreciate it. Did you guys have anything else? All right, and moving on. Um, Can we do the fire chiefs? Yeah, come on, we yeah. Go. I'll, I'll do that real quick. Uh, just to add on, she was talking about the new software coming off for finance. I did want to put out that we are getting new software that goes with the uh, meter reading, because currently we do fixed base at the city building for everybody's meter. Um, this will now be a, a, a web portal. I don't know if there's a fee for the individual person, you know, to they'll be able to get on their own computer and watch their own water usage as it happens. So it'll be like a live, it'll be like just getting on your bank statement and everything just live as it goes. We'll have that set up um, instead of having a server, everything will be web based. So that's coming along with that too. That'd be great. So when my son goes to take a shower, I can see what the water was prior to, and then yeah. an hour and a half later when he's done with the shower, I can say, Look how much water you go in there and shut the main up in about 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Or flush the toilet. <laughs> you got a tank list? It doesn't Turn matter. Turn off the hot water. Oh, yeah. it's warm all the time. Mm -hmm. Turn off the hot water here. I don't, I don't have one. And for the fire and EMS report, uh, in the year 2022, New Carolina Fire Division responded to 838 EMS call in the city, EMS calls in the city, and 149 in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 67 fire-related calls in the city and 17 in Elizabeth Township. We had a total run count of 1,299 so far in the year of 2022. The division responded to 205 mutual aid calls this year. We called for mutual aid 204 calls this year. We had one arson fire this year that was prosecuted by Clark County. This year we upgraded equipment on engine 52 and truck 52 by purchasing two new battery operated exhaust fans, a new portable generator, and new fittings and adapters for the, for the hose lines. This year we upgraded the station's training room with new lighting and a new large screen TV which can connect to a laptop or computer for training classes and can also be used for other city and council events or classes. This year, the division was blessed to hire 10 new personnel, four paramedics, and six EMTs, respectively. This has helped our staffing greatly. We also have three of our EMTs in paramedic school at this time, and two will start in the spring. <clears throat> All our annual tests, such as ladder hose, ladder hose, and SCBA, were completed without any failures. This year, we did the specifications for a new fire engine to replace engine 52. In 2023, we're looking at purchasing new SCBAs by grant money or our budget monies, and we will be putting on our levy on the May ballot this, we will be putting our levy on the May ballot this a renewal levy. Uh, and that is from Chief Stephen Trustee. Right. Um, I would assume if you guys have any questions, you can probably either give them to Mr. Kit or you could write them down or contact Chief. Or if there's anything for him and you know, at the regular meeting, just real quick or yeah. something. Okay. All right, moving on to comments from mayor and council members. Um, I'll just start off with, um, it's been uh, a really busy year. I think we could all agree with the housing developments and some tense meetings with uh, some folks that don't live in New Carl Island, some that do live within. But uh, it's also been an interesting time because we've got to learn a lot, you know, things that we haven't got to deal with before. I mean, of the you know, 10 years or 11 years I've been on council, I've never had to deal with a housing development. So it's been pretty interesting to, to see all the feedback and the, and the structure and how everything works and comes together. And, 
and you know, it's just been really interesting. Um, <clears throat> I also want to say I've enjoyed actually working with this council a lot because we have you know quite a, a, a different group up here as far as just you know different personalities, different ages, and you know even though we always don't always agree on everything, I don't you know when we walk away from an evening where we discuss things and, and something vote you know for just example something fails that I wanted to see pass or or vice versa Dan uh, see something that fails that he wanted to pass I don't walk away with any you know there's no there's no tension in, in, in here like I feel there was you know years ago or years way before us even uh, I feel that we all get along pretty well and I think that's a huge plus for for uh, everyone in the audience and in our citizens and uh, those that we have to work with on the administration side of the house so um, you know, New Carlisle's uh, a great town. I've lo I love it. We've, I've lived here my entire life, and uh, even though it's not perfect, I think it's a great place to live. There's always room for improvement, whether it's from me, council, administrators, uh, you know, the street department, whatever. There's always room for improvement. Uh, nothing or no one is ever perfect, uh, but I think we're definitely on the right path. And, and I think that, um, you know, me personally, this housing development could possibly bring some new opportunities for the city. Uh, you know, once we get a little bit closer to talking about those as, as a council, um, but I think it's definitely an interesting time for the city. So that's all I really had to say. It's been great working with you guys and uh, the administrators, and uh, it's nice seeing these faces in the council uh, chambers or in the audience. So thank you for coming tonight. That's all I have. Anybody has anything else to say or add? I would add. I echo what you say. It's been great that we're able to work together. Um, there's no arguing, no bickering, like in past council meetings. Um, we can disagree, but yet we can still be friends. Mm -hmm. um, I'm bothers me that we weren't, weren't able to get as much done this year uh, because of inflation. We weren't able to pave any streets because <coughs> the price of asphalt skyrocketed. And we wouldn't have gotten a very good bang for our buck. Um, but next year, uh, we're looking to make some progress in that area. We do have a few things <coughs> that uh, a few negatives will be hitting us next year, but I'm sure we'll be able to do that. And it's nice to see new faces here tonight. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Any comments? Huh? Ben, I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna put you on the spot if you're not gonna say nothing. I say I say Ben, I, I'm just gonna ask you since you are the newest member, I do believe. I mean. How have you liked it so far? I learn something new every meeting. Um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to, to be sitting with these men and women and um, <clears throat> to serve you guys. And um, I take that very seriously, um, but I'm, I'm very humbled by the, um, the opportunity. But um, it's, it's been a great learning experience for me in, in all aspects of um, just working with people and working for people. Uh, I do that in my everyday job and, and business, but um, in, in serving you as, as citizens, it's, it's a little bit different. So, um, but uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And just echo what you said, and just say ditto to that. Um, but I agree with your comment. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, it's. I. I'd say it's been great having you on. I mean, as, as I said, we get along with everybody. But I really liked that Ben was interested in being on council because he's a business owner. And I think that's important to have on council. I mean, if you can have someone who's a business owner, I think that's a huge asset for anybody in the community or the business owner. So you've got someone up here that kind of knows, you know, the background of, of owning a business and can kind of maybe add a little benefit to some of our local business <coughs> owners. So. It, I, I think it's great that you're on council, so thank you. So, anyone else? No? Nothing? All right. All right, uh, audience, we've got um, we've got six minutes left, and it's, if, we, if there's questions, we'll we'll continue the questions on into the next meeting. So, but if you got any questions, please go to the podium with your name and address. Please do. Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. 
Um, I'd like to say thanks for the coffee. That was nice. <laughs> and especially for the splashing lights at the curve oh. coming into town, yes. with the 25 mile per hour. That's really nice to see that up, and it really shows up well, so I think that might really be helpful. Yeah, hopefully. Um, and I do have one question. I know they're talking about closing Edison New Carlisle Road with this development, and I just wonder if anyone could explain to me why they're doing that. Uh, I mean, it hasn't come to us, and I don't know, it, to be honest, it's, uh, talking about developments, I don't know the exact process of how that would go. If you want to chime in, let me know. But there, as far as I know, there's been suggestions when they did the traffic study uh, with a couple of different options as to cap it off so that so it's not so confusing coming off of Galewood and making it you know, less of a hazard for people coming off of Addison. But as far as I know, there's nothing set in stone yet. Uh, there's not. There's a couple different phases that could happen as the developments come in to, you know, if they get in and do 50 or 100, everything could stay there. But then they'll say, okay, now we need to add to this turn lane that, that was in the traffic impact study and what things might need to be done to just make sure that everything flows good. And those items, and that was one of them, so there's like a turn lane at the speedway, there's that closing um, Galewood, there's a possible traffic signal up by Bancrest. There's a couple different items that could progress as things go to improve the flow. Okay, I just didn't know what the reason was. I couldn't see any. Right now, there is not. But be as Benny, things progress, any there benefit? Could be. I mean, I didn't know why they were doing that because it seems like it's going to be interfering with a couple of businesses. And I was thinking that new business just went in with the guns and stuff, and if that gets blocked off, and we're about, we, I've I wouldn't already, think that we've would already be communicated good. with the business owners there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just wondered what the reason was to do it. It's just a traffic flow issue. Is that flow and safety. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Janelle. That's how we got here. Okay, so we'll wrap this up if that's okay, and then we'll we'll do, and then we'll uh, get into comments. Uh, is you going? Okay. Make it quick. <laughs> You're all right. Don't do nothing quick. Okay. Lynn Sexton, 522 Hamilton Avenue. Just want to say a few things to the council members and those that do come to the podium. When people are sitting at home and listening to these online and trying to hear what you say, there's a select few members, nobody can ever hear them. Same goes with the people who approach this podium. Um, and you know, I had that foot surgery. There were times I'm like, I can't hear what's going on. And people need to speak up same way with those who come to the podium. It is the most frustrating thing to go along and say, I'm just going to use you, Mike, because yeah. you're used to me picking on you. Right. You will see something really out. And someone else, Bill Cook. Bill's boo and doesn't say anything. <laughs> Man, she did it. Uh, I know. Hit me right on the head, didn't she? <laughs> I know why, because I can pick on you. But that, uh, that's what I'm saying, and that's what I hear. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I would like to, real quick, I would like to at some point maybe get into it uh, with, uh, you know, after going to some other local meetings where they have their own complete, and I know Casey's not part of the meeting, but wireless mics that are rechargeable. I don't know if that's something that we could look into down the road so that every single person has got a, bit, a mic right in front of them instead of one that's over here. And one well, that's over there. Similar to like Bethel, when we had the Bethel. Yeah, 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 they had the, yeah, that's, that's where it was. was. That's where it was. They had their own mic for each person. Especially as we have the iPads, sometimes they sit in front or, yep. or right by the speakers or the microphone. So it does. No, good Still. input. So thank you. So, all right, we'll wrap this up. And uh, like I said, anybody has questions, we <laughs> will get to it in the, in the next uh, regular session. So uh, I just need a motion for adjourn. Motion for Second. Motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Lindsay. Second. All right. Um, Got to refresh me. It's been a while since I've been clerk. It's right after him. after the second, right? Start with him. Yep. Yeah. Councilman Roadwall. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. And Councilman Lindsay. Yes. All right. We are adjourned.